From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this Friday night. I'm Russ Riesinger. After a week of warm fall weather, some big changes are on the way right in time for the weekend. Looking out of Billings on this Friday night, the first winter storm of the season is headed our way. It could mean some snow depending on where you're watching us from. Chief Meteorologist Ed McIntosh joining us now with a first look at the forecast. Ed. Here's a look at uh, the webcam from around the Lavana area from just a short while ago. You can see the rain showers coming down and around Judith Gap. Again, some of the wind in the mix as we some of the showers continuing to develop. A look at Doppler radar here this evening. And you can see those showers continuing to move in around the Billings area and Eastern Plains. Meanwhile, we are seeing a little bit of higher elevation snow. We were checking out conditions around McDonald Pass outside of Great Falls and continue to watch at least some slushy conditions continue to develop there. And we have a whole area where we have winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings for the higher elevations that will be in central and western Montana. More on how it will affect our forecast coming up in just a few minutes from now. The House Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol has subpoenaed former President Trump. They're demanding that he testify under oath and provide documents related to the attack on the Capitol. Deborah Alpha Rome has the latest from Washington. There are nine eyes and zero no's. The January 6th committee made good on their vote last week to subpoena former President Trump, saying he tried to undermine the 2020 election results and obstruct the peaceful transition of power. In a letter accompanying the subpoena, they write, the evidence demonstrates that you knew this activity was illegal and unconstitutional, and also knew that your assertions of fraud were false. We must seek the testimony under oath. The committee demanded Trump testify by mid-November. They're also asking he provide documents, including personal communications he had with members of Congress, his inner circle, and extremist groups in the months leading up to January 6th, the day of the attack and since. Committee member Pete Aguilar said they're open to questioning the former president in a live hearing. We're going to be prepared if, if the former president uh, decides to come and if he puts uh, restrictions on it for live testimony. We're going to be prepared for that eventuality. Uh, we will be prepared uh, in any scenario. Trump's attorneys say they are reviewing the subpoena and they call it unprecedented. But Trump is not the first former or sitting president to be subpoenaed by Congress. At least six have testified on Capitol Hill. The subpoena came on the same day as one of Trump's closest allies, Steve Bannon, was sentenced to four months in prison for defying a subpoena from the same committee. Outside the courthouse, the former Trump aide remained defiant and looked ahead to the midterms. The Biden administration ends on the eighth evening of the 8th of November. The judge elected to let Bannon remain free as he appeals his conviction. Deborah Alfaron, CBS News, the White House. Tonight, an appeals court has temporarily halted President Biden's student relief program as applications pour in by the millions for loan forgiveness. The ruling comes as Biden touted his administration's student debt relief plan at Delaware State University. The emergency motion was brought by attorney generals in Missouri and Nebraska who claim the forgiveness will temporarily harm the state's loan programs. Montana Governor Greg Gianforte made a stop here in the Magic City today to see progress on Billings' new medical school and also talk about his health care agenda for next year. Uh, soon, uh, the first medical school in Montana will open. That's a big deal. Gianforte joined Rocky Vista University officials for a tour of the Montana College of Osteopathic Medicine. He said he's enthusiastic about what the new school will mean for the future of health care in Montana and also outlined what his priorities will be for health care in the upcoming 2023 legislative session. These objectives have been arrived at through discussions with many health care providers and the community uh, were and they're grounded on really two core principles. First, we're focused on expanding access to high quality care across the entire state of Montana and second, we're focused on lowering cost for Montanans. I hear this over and over again as we travel the state and visit with folks. Uh, we've made progress on both fronts, uh, which I'll recap in a moment, uh, but there's a lot more we can do by working together. 
Some of the governor's agenda would include reducing licensing barriers to attract more medical and mental health workers to the state, lowering costs by increasing competition and reducing what he calls unnecessary regulations, while also increasing medical billing transparency. Well, this weekend marks another start to a general firearm season for deer and elk across Montana. As MTN's Andy Curtis reports, whether it's your first season or your 50th, there's still plenty you need to know, including some changes this year. A lot of people just assume they know the regulations. This year is the first year with some pretty big changes to some of our areas in the state. The hunting district boundaries have changed and some of the regulations within hunting districts have changed. So it's really important for people to brush up on the regulations before they head out. Now your preparation shouldn't end with that. We have a vast amount of public land to hunt here in Montana, but where that public land ends and private land begins can sometimes be pretty confusing. It's your responsibility as a hunter to know whether you're on public or private land and whether you have access to the land you're, you're hunting on. It's in Montana, it's, it's, a, it's in statute. You have to have permission to hunt on, public, on private land. So we have some good tools on our website. We have a hunt planner that has the private uh, public land ownerships in it. But if you are hunting private land this season, remember that communication with that landowner is key. And a little respect goes a very long way. We'll tell hunters, you know, I talk to landowners and ask them like, hey, you know, thanks for letting me hunt. Um, you know, do you want me to keep the gates as I find them? Do you want me to close all the gates? Uh, you know, do you mind if I, if I shoot something you know, off the road, can I drive to go retrieve it? Mm -hmm. uh, if it gets cold and and uh, we're going to be out all day, can I build a fire? Or you know, all those sorts of questions you need to be asked uh, because you can't just assume that you know what the landowner's wishes are for their land. And hunting private land is a privilege. Greg also mentioned that bears are still very, very active at this time of the year, especially as they try to pack on those final pounds before winter. So be bear aware. Make sure you wear your hunter's orange, practice firearm safety, and have fun. Reporting from Helena, Andy Curtis, MTN News. We'll head on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2, a local police chief leading a double life as a sports announcer. And then later, we hit the gridiron with all the action from another exciting night of Friday Night Football. The MTN 10 o'clock news continues right after this.